We're just getting a little bit long in the tooth, but uh, you know, still works well. This is the kind of thing you have to deal with with S60 if you're not used to it. You can set a default access point, um, but if you're going to hop back and forth between Wi-Fi and 3G services, you know, you, you want to set it, you're going to have to choose your access point manually or add a third-party program to manage it. This is the kind of thing that Nokia needs to just make this a little bit more user-friendly, have the machine do a little bit more behind the scenes in terms of switching from, you know, prioritize. Look for Wi-Fi. If there's no Wi-Fi, then default to, to uh, 3G or Edge or what have you. But we'll go to the, uh, to the web here over Wi-Fi, and we will go to... Phone dog, and the page loads. You know, it, it's pretty quick. The Wi-Fi connection was good. Everything loads pretty quickly. The the browser still works well. Um, it was state of the art a couple of years ago, and now you know I think uh, mobile Safari for iPhone and Opera, uh, Skyfire also is pretty compelling in terms of being the leading browsers on the market. But, um, you know, the, this S60 browser still renders pages well. You know, here's the phone dog page. But we'll bring that in so you can see it. Um, there we go. So you can go full screen mode and you get the uh, the mini map, which Nokia kind of made famous, but again, you know, a few years ago, so. But uh, it works well. You've got some flash support right out of the box, which is always good. And uh, we'll go to one of these videos here so you can see how the phone handles, uh, handles video content. Uh, the phone comes with uh, the S60 built-in um, podcasting app for uh, for subscribing to podcast feeds, which is uh, fees, podcast feeds, which is nice. And uh, you've got comes with the uh, Tiger Woods Golf on here as well, which is a fun game. And you know, all in all, I think it's a nice device. I just uh, again, the lack of um, there's also no voice command button on the phone and no uh, infrared receiver on the device, which those to me are a little bit minor. The lack of a dedicated voice command button is definitely gonna get some people, turn some people off. But the lack of a rocker switch to me is just a big, you know, that's just a big no-no, big faux pas on, on Nokia's part, I think. Uh, there are other ways to cut costs than <laughs> eliminating the rocker switch. So you can see the, the browser having a little bit of trouble here with this page, because you got the flash content on it, I guess, a little bit harder to render. Um, but here's the YouTube video window loading up in line, which is pretty cool. And you can play it in line. Again, you know, having a few issues, but uh, but it's playing. And then you can go to uh, full screen mode. And you know, again, uh, and then that clicks through the YouTube YouTube page, so it works. It's flash support in line, plays the YouTube videos, which is pretty cool. Uh, even if you know a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit more power under the hood would be a little bit helpful. Uh, this one also has the Nokia Modes application, which is uh, appearing on on more and more, or even all their new smartphones. Where you can set up two different home screens: one for your you know your work life, and one for your personal life. So you can switch back and forth between work and personal. Contacts and email accounts and wallpapers and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Uh, the S60 Active Standby Homepage, you can set up your alerts, you know, with your um, your calendar alerts and your your email alerts and all that kind of stuff, which is really nice. Uh, Bluetooth, obviously, in the phone. You know, all in all, it's a really uh, it's a really powerful device, and for 200 bucks, you're getting a lot in the in the phone which is great just a few oversights again that uh you know the plastic body for for cost savings i'm fine with that 
3G, not full HSDPA. I think that's still fine too. Uh, you still got Wi-Fi in here and you know, 3G is fast enough for most people. Um, and again, you know, saving money, you're gonna have some trade-offs, but come on, rock or switch. Anyway, there you go. I would give this phone, you know, overall, I, I would give it a, a reserved thumbs up if you know the inconveniences and the things you're gonna trade off. The problem is that the E71's been out for long enough that it, you know, usually you can find it on sale somewhere for under 300 bucks. So then you're looking at, you know, 200 or so for this one, the E63 versus under 300 when you can find it on sale for the E71, you might be compelled just to pay the extra few bucks to get the nicer E71. And then the other thing, if you're a customer in the US with uh, AT&T is gonna have the E71X available, we hear any day now, then it's kind of like, well, if you're gonna sign up for a contract anyway, you know, maybe it's worth it to pay a little bit less and get the, uh, I mean, to, to sign up for the contract and then get the branded version of the E71 instead of the E63. Decisions, decisions. Anyway, there you go, E71, uh, on its own merits, a, a very feature-packed, you know, high feature-to-price ratio with just a few little, few quirks, few little things I don't like about it, but a lot going for it. Uh, lots more on the E63, the E71, and the forthcoming E71X, all Nokia Series 60 smartphones with the full QWERTY candy board styling over on PhoneDog.com. Till next time, I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, you can play the One Pod Bandit. You can win phones. Uh, our friends at Nokia and all the other companies in the industry kind enough to sponsor the giveaway. You know what? When the economy's down, nothing like getting something for nothing, right? So head on over, register, it's free to play. Till next time, I'm Noah, we're Phone Dog. Thanks for watching, we'll see you later. Bye bye.